So I just hit the thing. All right. Splitting hairs, free salon education podcast starts now. Featuring Matt Beck, Christina Cavalcanti, Brian Hare, and Carly Wareheim. Today's episode is powered by MinervaBeauty.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to Splitting Hairs, episode 24, uh, the free salon education.com podcast. Powered by MinervaBeauty.com. If you're opening or renovating a salon or barbershop, partner with our friends at Minerva Beauty, trusted by over 200,000 businesses worldwide. My salon is filled with their furnishings, chairs, mirrors, shampoo systems, and more. Visit their huge showroom in Georgia to shop thousands of options online. Many available same-day shipping. Use code FSE24 uh, for 10% off Minerva brand items. MinervaBeauty.com exclusions apply. Also check out our friends at Mevo. If you're ready to elevate your salon or wellness business, meet Mevo, the leader in salon and spa software, empowering users in 36 plus countries from solo artists to franchises. Mevo supports growth, team success, and client engagement. Join Mevo family and thrive today at Mevo.com. Uh, those are both companies that we use every day in the salon, uh, from our furnishings to our salon software. Really, those are the two things you need for a successful business. And maybe one other thing that we're going to talk about today. So, Brian. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That was funny. That Thanks. was funny. And speaking of Brian, I got Brian here with me. Hi. Carly Wareheim. Hi. Christina Cavalcanti. Hi. Um, and we're going to uh, chat it up today just a little bit about hey. VMA hair. Uh, that happened, maybe give our opinions on that. And then also, um, and I'm going to throw them up on the screen so we'll be able to it's see. A, it's a talking podcast. I know. So we're not even going to show it <laughs> to anybody. I know. Uh, it can I be just summed up in one sentence. It, it really <laughs> can be summed up in one sentence. Um, and if other people have other opinions about it, but there was one thing I wanted to bring up about it because there was a theme I felt like a little bit. It's like almost like they all went to the same hairdresser um, to get their hair a, done. They call that a trend. Oh, <laughs> well, that trend we're going to talk about. Cool, Brian. Thanks. Hey, I'm just keeping you in touch with the kids. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> comments from last week. Uh, Jennifer said, you guys are literally crying. So fun to watch. I love you guys. Uh, last week was fun. We did have a good time. Um, how was the salon this week? Uh, was it all good? Good. Yeah. Nothing crazy. No. Just living the dream. Working through. Is it? Do we feel like, wh where are we at? We're in September, so October is usually slow, but not for you <laughs> because <laughs> we just talked about how you want to um, make some adjustments. Uh, yeah. And this, I mean, we could talk about this real quick because it is something that um, you've you've built a book. You're busy at this yeah. point, super busy, and you're having trouble even finding spots for your clients for the rest of the year. Yeah, because I I don't remember. I think it started last Christmas. <clears throat> I just had my clients start booking, like the clients that are non haircut clients only book a couple appointments so that they don't have to not get their time. And now that has turned into, you know, for the rest of the year, I'm already solid booked and I'm trying to like fit my current clientele in and don't have the space for it. So I discussed wanting to close down the ability to, for like new clients to book online. Cause I love them. I want new people, but right now I got to take care of my people. Yeah. And I think we've talked about this before. <clears throat> I, correct me if I'm wrong, but kind of shutting down the availability of new clients, like as, as needed. Right. Right. Like I feel bad saying that, but yeah. I kind of like have to do it right now because there are people that have been my clients for years that I, I am having a hard time getting booked. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel an allegiance to that because they are why I have a paycheck. So I want to make sure that I can take care of them. And people are always asking, how do you uh, how do you grow your book? How do you raise your prices? All of that. And that's kind of they go hand in hand. So if you raise your prices, you could make room for new clients. Yeah. But if you've been raising your prices like we've we haven't raised your prices in a little bit, but yeah, it's been a couple of years. But we also you have to assess um, like the current environment, yeah. uh, the economy, how much people are spending on their hair. I think we're pretty well priced um, I, and probably could go up a little bit higher, but I also, it is a good okay. thing. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, but it is a good thing to be in demand the way that you are. And yeah. then and it puts you in a, in a good position, I think, when people raise their prices too quick or try to become too uh, like selfish in their um, availability early in. Yeah. Uh, and if this and if it's your goal to, to have a book like yours. Right. Yeah. Well, I yeah. like I helped build this myself. Like uh, the question comes up, like, how do you book? Like, how do you stay booked? I made it, you know, even probably before it was quite as true as it is now. I made it important for people to understand if you want this time, you got to call it now. Yeah. And then, you know, it started with, I think you should have your next two appointments in. And all right, I think maybe you should have your next three appointments in. And now I've had people booking through the end of the year since the beginning of summer, yeah. which is awesome. But like you create that for yourself. Like I don't, I, like I never understood the mentality of just waiting for that to happen in your book naturally because I don't think it does. Like I had to put a little bit of work in myself with that, like to create that so many months out book. Yeah. Nice. Hey. So um, VMA hair. Did you guys watch the VMAs? No. I didn't either. I don't. That's the first question in the chat. Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Yeah. Okay. I, I saw like separate parts of it online, yeah. but I didn't watch it all the way through. Yeah. That's kind of, separate I wonder if that's how a lot of people are now. I, I, I don't really have a desire to watch it, but um, I was interested to just see what the hair was like on it, obviously. Which, again, it was, it was able to wait till the next day. Yeah. It yeah. was very weird this year um, because it was a lot of performances and then, like, a couple, like, awards of people accepting it there. Okay. Like, it was weird. Like, I just felt like it was, like, performance, performance, performance. Taylor Swift gets up there, performance, performance, performance. Like, <laughs> You're right. it just was, I don't know, it was okay. interesting. It's kind of why I wanted to watch it because there were so many performances. Yeah, yeah. it's like a concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, here's Taylor Swift. Let's see. It. Oh, so bangs are really the... Uh, All right. Yes, queen. Sabrina Carpenter. Love her. A lot of talk about Please. her. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, bangs. There bangs. you go. Little Megan yeah. looks good. Great, I know what videos I'm making. All right. All right. So there you go. Now yeah, um, we'll do next year's. So you thought the trend was bangs, Matt? Is that what yeah. So what do we think? Is, <laughs> That's what we got. Bangs. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. Why did Madonna oh, okay. skip the 2024? Oh, TV I thought that. Because she, because we're all old now. <laughs> <laughs> gave, she gave her dress to Sabrina Carpenter. I did hear that. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. The one that she's wearing was what Madonna wore. I don't know. Back when she showed up on the carpet with, I saw the picture of her and Michael Jackson like that long ago. So wow. did you guys, not to change the subject, but did you see um, Britney Spears talking about Sabrina Carpenter's performance? No. 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 Is Britney okay? You're just we now probably getting there? Have No, I knew Britney. she wasn't, but she's, I, I think. Yeah, it was yeah. like. It was hard to watch, like, like hard to watch just because yeah. you feel bad. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Especially because we messed that poor girl yeah. up. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> that is, I'm too you old didn't. for that time, aren't I? <laughs> we, I meant like as the culture, minus Christina. <laughs> yes. Just put that out there. I'm, I'm on her side and just feel bad. Oh yeah. Everybody is. Oh yeah. Except her dad. Oh. Yeah. I have to watch the video though. It's pretty, it's just. I don't know. I don't know what what seems to be going on there. Um, all right, what? Let's go into the next thing because this will be better. Um, <laughs> uh, as I don't know. That was that was pretty flawless. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, another thing I want to talk about as a hairdresser, what is your favorite thing to talk about with your clients? Nothing. Um, <laughs> and my there. my other thought on this. So this was like a Reddit feed. Um, was do you feel it's just as important to focus on your client's hair as it is to have a great conversation with them? Basically, I've seen all different levels of stylists that have been successful, non-successful, and I do feel like the most successful ones so far are have the gift of gab in a way. Um, but I don't think that's, that's 100%. I just think that it's part of being successful in this career is being able to not be totally like um, the way that you are with your clients, Brian. Like you don't have to, you kind of perform in a way yeah. for your clients. Like, well, I mean, I think I, <clears throat> I, 
I think I like my personality type has attracted a certain type of client. Yeah. Like the ones that that's not what they're looking for and the going and get your hair done experience just don't stay with me. The people that do are the ones that want to come in and chat about their life, my life. Yeah, we talk about hair, of course, but like the type like the type of people that are happiest going to Carly because they get that time to themselves while Carly just works Mm -hmm. are probably not going to be as happy with me. Yeah. Right. So over time I'll build this kind of book and she'll build this kind of book out of the different kinds of people and the different experiences that they want. Yeah. I just have yet to. So, and this is kind of why I wanted to bring Carly also into this conversation because Carly's also focused on two careers right now. So, (laughs) so in a way, and, and so I want to, it you sounds like it's going well. <laughs> I, just, I was just talking. I had a week yesterday, or yesterday. I had a week, yesterday. week yesterday. Basically, that sums it up. Um, no, I just, um, I think for me, like number one, you don't want me talking. I I do talk. It's not that I don't talk. Yeah. The thing, it depends on what I'm doing. So like, you right. don't want me to be talking while I'm putting five thousand foils in your hair because will be there forever and they might it just might not turn out as great as it would be with me silent so um yeah i don't know i just i i like to chat a little bit but i'm not i'm not really a small talk talk person either and i think yeah. that is something that i struggle with like i don't really love small talk i feel find it and this <laughs> just so we're clear i'm not comparing the two of you really because i put Carly, I put you both in different categories yeah. in my head mm-hmm. because no, that's. I mean, I I agree. Yeah, like, I'm working hand I don't in think hand. One is better than right. the other. They're no. just different. Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm working hand in hand with Carly every day to build her other career. Yeah. So, so I think there's yeah. not to cut you up. I think there's just as many people that like the chit chat, and there's just as many right. that don't. Mm-hmm. But why haven't I seen? It, and this is where my conversation is. Why haven't? Who have we seen that didn't have that? That is can't like has to stop taking new clients because they their book is so full. Like I I can only think of really two people. Who have you seen that wait what? That <laughs> that are as booked as Brian is. Okay. That that don't talk. That don't talk or oh, don't have like that that same type of relationship. Like I I'm not saying it's not out there. I just I'm just very curious but i would i mean not to put you on the spot i'd beg to say like how many stylists do you actually know their books no i don't yeah that's what i mean yeah yeah. Yeah. that's what i'm saying but i oh i think they exist i think a lot of them do and i think a lot of some of them even probably venture out to do like there's so many different ways you can be a hairstylist which is kind of cool yeah i agree so i think the typical in the salon the stereotype of being, you know, I just had this conversation with somebody that we saw. She's like, you know, I want to go back to the shampoo bowl and get my hair washed. And like, it's this, this, that, and the other thing, like the stylist feels like they have to talk to me. And she's like, well, why is that? Because I stopped going. <laughs> and I think there's this thing of like, stylists are our therapists. Like that used to be a, a saying. And I don't think people really need that. Well, I think everybody has therapists now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. I think yeah. it's a, a more. Yeah, but I think like, back in the day, people were might have been like she said, I was it was awkward and I wanted her to be quiet. So I just stopped going. Yeah. Yeah. So I they think don't that know that, how to say that. Not to say that obviously Brian's clients exist, too, that like you are part of their families and they are yours. Right. In, almost in a sense. I think yeah. timing, too. Like I have people in my chair for like three plus hours at a time for what I'm doing. Like it's hard to hold a conversation with somebody that you just met for that long. Like, Mm -hmm. um, and And it's not necessary and it's not forced. It's not genuine. And And I always start off right off the bat with saying like, if I know someone's going to be there long, bring a book, bring your work, bring your computer. I don't like, I like to get in there and just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, don't feel like you have to talk to me. And I, probably won't talk to you until like your foils are out of your head so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so if and we're that, like what's different not better or worse anything it's just different is like my people what they the the chat that we have the show that gets put on is a part of why they are coming back like i i think 
for so many of my clients, I'll be totally honest, I don't think I'm doing anything that's so special, only I could do it. The only thing that I am offering that's different is me. And that I am a part of this because I am me. Yeah, I think personality has a lot to do with it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that's where I'm... I'm okay. So if you spend a few hours with somebody, then how does that equate to, or you're spending an hour and a half, two hours with somebody. Um, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is like, what is the success, financial success or happiness success of a hairdresser? Well, and what is like, what is the recommendation? Like if you're going to hair school and you want to be successful in this business i think the beauty of it is that either way you can be successful right. i think it's yeah. when, what i would tell them is figure out what it's going to take to make you happy is it going to be mm -hmm. just digging in and doing the work and keeping it about hair and just be the hair professional or are you going to have more fun getting to know these people like i think a lot of stylists have probably built their book in that sense too especially since like the lived in color hit like years ago because those people and color transformations like everyone's pushing the envelope people are showing dark hair then blonde then red and like seasonal changes and then hence even wigs like i think there's a lot of time put into those typical ha hair that you see mm -hmm. and there's a lot of money to be made in that. And I bet you the conversations are probably start out like Carly said, and maybe if you can get those clients in often, I'd say the turnover, like for instance, Carly, you said back in the day, like you had a lot of young people coming to you yeah. when you were in Maryland because they would see that stuff on social media and they would want it. Yeah. Now they're not your client say, Brian now is like hard to fit in his regular clients coming in all the time. And you would probably be seeing more people, mm -hmm. different people. You'd be saying, seeing them the same, but I do believe that there's stylists out there that have that niche of whatever they do. And those people are coming to them regularly. Probably depends where you live, how much money, all of that. But I think the beauty of it is you could be personality wise, a chit chatter or not and still make it. Yes. Yeah. I just, I just wish I could see a graph on yeah. <laughs> what that means. You know what I mean? Like what, like does that, I understand that there are clients for everyone out there. So that's, that is the beauty of the business. Are you just wondering which builds faster? Which, which equates to the most success just financially. So financially too, I, you can look at it like a, an average restaurant and a fine dining restaurant. Yeah. If I could turn my tables and be good at that, then I can make just as much if, if my if the bill was two hundred dollars as opposed to sixty. Exactly. So yeah. I think that the method is really how you're controlling that. Yeah. Again, it goes back to you making yourself in demand for whatever you're good at. Right. I don't think it it's, it necessarily it, has to be. Um. I think either one. If it's you funny. have two people that are good at making that happen, one or the other is going to win out because of that. Yeah. It's funny you make that analogy because I have used the same one for years. Like when I waited tables, I did everything from IHOP to super fine dining. Same. Just like I have Not in IHOP, salons. Like I've done, you know, strip mall chain to super, super fancy salons. And like in restaurant world, I always was the happiest and did best in that like regular restaurant where I could like give more of my personality where I wasn't told like, just be quiet, just serve like people come here for the food and the ambience, not for you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that was fine. Mm -hmm. I still made good money, but it wasn't as fun for me. So I just didn't enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. Whereas the places where I got to sit in the booth with them and shoot the shit for 10 minutes, like, mm -hmm. That was fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up making, at the end of the day, same money. I just had more fun doing that. Yeah. That yeah. has a lot to do with and it, too. Because I feel like, like selfishly, like I <clears throat> have a hard time being on all the time like that. Like I don't like to go home and feel exhausted and feel like I can't have a conversation with anybody because I just talked all day at my job. And yeah. I just feel like mm -hmm. having a balance in that is better for me mentally than 
the op the yeah the i was ladder, like gonna it. piggyback off of that saying mm -hmm. it de depends probably i think we've talked about this like what stage in your life you're at yeah and kind of what you're doing i know waitressing bartending i did for years and after i had hayden i didn't go back right away and i think if i did i would have been a little bit more burnt out because you have a baby at home you're doing you know like but then in another sense you like seek out that communication from adults too in that time so i think it is like a, a probably a situational thing too what you can make happen make yeah. work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do we answer any questions for you <laughs> or do we just create more either turn no, and burn i think that <laughs> that's the conversation Find your lane. that's it yeah. like figure out what what's going to work for you and do I, that i think that's the key is finding your lane like for me I didn't also enjoy being, and we've talked about this before, but um, so I found my lane and the things that I do every day. And I think Carly's finding her lane and the things she loves to do every day. And I think you have your lane and what you love to do every day, but yours happens to be 100% hair and you have a full book that is, you know, booked through the year. So, but you've been doing this for a, a long time now too. So uh, a lot longer than, um, you know, Carly or other people that maybe have it. Um, so my thing is, I just want to, I'm hoping that a podcast like this can help people maybe just understand, like find your passion within this business, um, and then figure it out. Like I love teaching. So I made that my, my business within this, which helped me, uh, form, you know, the life uh, that I wanted within my career. Um, I don't know if I would have been as happy uh, just being behind the chair the whole time. Um, I still like seeing the people that I see and like having conversations and stuff, but I'm like Carly in a lot of ways of, um, I kind of enjoy just doing my thing in my own controlled space in a way. And then, but um, so yeah, so I just. I think the internet has helped too, uh, to probably explain that to people, the realization of, oh, you want this, Yeah. we have to get to work. And if if you are that person that doesn't like to chat as much, you can kind of put that into words and say, well, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves, we're gonna get down to this and not like, there's yeah. no chit chatting or yeah. we're just gonna get to work. And I think encouraging salon owners or just, it, let's even say that you have a salon suite, creating the space that fits that, um, which I think naturally you kind of would, but I think there's some, People, I think the silent service is a thing. I do I really think, do think there's a silent service I room. I think that's what I struggle <laughs> with the most, though, here, is, like, Brian and Danielle are talkative, and I'm not. So then I've had to sort that out with myself of, like, you're fine. Like, don't. Yeah, I just like, let Brian talk. In, in my head, it's like, <laughs> I'm just like, did you oh hear what God, he said? That's like, funny. I see. Well, so maybe. talking and my client is going to be like, oh my God, why is she talking? Everybody else is talking <laughs> like that. But that's also anxiety. So. <laughs> I was going to say that could be your own anxiety because yeah. I would say we have the best of all worlds here. We have Brian who talking a lot makes it seem like it's a negative. You're not a talk. You are, you're a people person. Yeah, you're a social yeah. butterfly. Yeah, you I'm like to be. Offense, yeah. <laughs> And no, but I mean, but it's not in an annoying way, right? you know, um, Danielle is middle of the road and Carly, I hear you too. You're just not as chatty. Yeah. You'll let them have the conversation and let them kind of, or not. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like yeah. the when best was, of all worlds. If you ask me, That's when I was in beauty school, I was a, just a shampoo boy, at this fancy salon in Princeton. And I remember this one hairdresser, she was Russian. She was very, like, very Russian. And she said at one point, she goes, when he gets on the floor, I want him next to me so he can talk. He'll entertain my clients. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Should I put my tip cup up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, I hope, I hope that conversation, um, you know, just makes people think a little bit. Create your space. Um, create your experience. Go all in on that. It's your brand. Um, to, yeah, to help. I think a lot of people are kind of saying that they don't love to talk, on, at least in this chat. Um, Ruby, 
Jess and Adrian. How ironic. Um, and then Ruby has said that lots of her clients that don't talk much love to listen and chime in every now and then to the salon talk. And yeah. I love it. So which is why kind of a nice I think if you're unless you're creating like a quiet space salon suite, if you're by yourself and you're awkward at talking or just don't like talking to people and now you've got to sit there for a couple hours. Hire like, me. I it's actually because I cut hair. I'm cranking the music up in the back. Yeah, yeah. Cranking the music <laughs> yeah, up. Like Put your AirPods in. Just tell them you can hear them better. Um, but maybe you guys just need to be comfortable in silence. Maybe you're uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine be. in silence. <laughs> Matt. I, mean, <laughs> I can't do silence <laughs> <laughs> ever. I talk in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but again, I do think that there are a lot of stylists out there that don't like to talk. I also the the industry average. It would be great to be able to. Figure out why the industry average is start the, the survey. Is. Start the survey. Yeah, I'll send it out. Email. It's coming. Yeah, let's do it on Instagram. Are you a survey chatter or not? Says. Yeah, but still, even the answer of that doesn't fix. Doesn't help with what I'm getting at. Do you do you understand? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I'm trying to. I understand that there are hairdressers out there that don't like to talk to people. But is there a successful, fully booked, can't get anybody else in for the rest of the year hairdresser out there that doesn't like? love conversation and love like that part of the business. Well, not even not loving it doesn't foster that. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you can not love it, but still do it. Yeah. That's the kind of, that's the question I'm asking. Cause I, I obviously haven't seen every hairdresser's book. I don't know, but if we're being truthful and we're really putting it out there, like, do you, do yeah. you have that? Because that would be, it would be cool. It would be interesting. I would love to know if you're somebody like that. Cause I've seen it the other way. I've seen people that have the gift of gab be booked all the way like through for months, um, but it's rare to me. So, um, all right, cool. Uh, follow us, everything, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Probably deleting the VMA part of this podcast. So, if you were here live <laughs> with us, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, that was awkward. And then um, follow Brian, hairstyle. <laughs> And if you want to see more awkward stuff that I don't delete later, then hang on, I'm coming, Carly. Then, uh, then here's Carly. <laughs> My timing is usually on point with the cameras. And he's like, but again, I just want to throw Guess in there. Guess won't that, be uh, here next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, follow Carly. Follow the awkward stuff that doesn't get cut. Yeah. Everybody Carly. Carly's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and follow oh, us, everything, man. at Free Salon Education. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.